YouTube, what's up? It's your boy Kuzi, and welcome back to another Phasmophobia guide. In this guide, I'm going to be showing you the easiest way that you can complete the hardest challenge in Phasmophobia right now, the Apocalypse Challenge. Doing so will give you these three trophies so that you can showcase in your lobby and show off to all your friends when you play multiplayer with them. So we're going to be breaking it all down. There's timestamps down below. So before we get into it, if you like the video, give me a thumbs up. If you don't like it, give me a thumbs down. If you want to find your way back for more Phasmophobia content, as well as other spooky stuff, you can hit the subscribe button with notifications on. And if you want to come check me out live, you can do so by going to twitch.tv slash koozie or clicking the link that's down in the description below. All right. So anywho, enough pitter patter, chatter, chatter. Let's get into it. All right, so what is the Apocalypse Challenge? First and foremost, I'll break down what you have to do to get the, the challenge completed as well as go through the settings. So first and foremost, the Apocalypse Challenge, you have to go to Sunny Meadows by yourself on 15 times multiplier. You have to correctly identify the ghost. You have to complete all three of the optional objectives and you have to get a photo of the ghost and you have to survive. Okay, so uh, let's go through the settings here first and foremost. Um, so in order to get the settings correct, um, you can go into your custom settings, go to presets and hit Apocalypse 3. There's like one or two things that you can change um, to make it, uh, you know, a little bit better for you. Um, but uh, breaking it down here, you've got the player tab. So you're starting out at zero sanity. So that means that the ghost can hunt as soon as you walk into the building. Um, your sanity pills don't work, so uh, your sanity pill restoration is set to zero. Uh, your sanity drain speed is set to 200%, which is pretty default for like the higher difficulties like Nightmare and Insanity, so that's across the board. But we're at zero sanity anyway, so it doesn't matter. Here's where it gets interesting, okay? Uh, no sprinting, okay? Oh, wait, it gets better. Uh, your player speed is set to 50%, so you were slow. And I mean very slow, all right? There's no flashlights. Oh. Oh no, oh no, 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 because that would be too easy. Uh, and obviously you have to have lose items and consumables on because if you turn it off, you don't get any reward multiplier, all right? Moving on to the ghost tab. Uh, the ghost speed, get this, set to 150%. So not only can you not sprint, um, or on top of that, you're slow as shit, you have no flashlights, but the ghost is set to max speed, all right? So that's fun. Um, roaming frequency, changing favor room, interaction uh, amount, and event frequency are all set to the highest difficulties uh, to give you the most rewards. Um, but honestly, this stuff doesn't matter. We'll get into that here in a moment. Um, friendly ghost is obviously off because just like lose items and consumables. If we turn it on, we have no reward multiplier. So uh, now your grace period is set to zero. So if you've never played any of the higher than professional difficulties where you have the shorter grace periods, what this means is on lower difficulties like amateur through professional, when the ghost starts hunting, it will make a sound, close the door, and then start chasing you. And that, however long that takes is whatever your grace period is set to. So for instance, if your grace period is like three seconds, uh, the ghost will like appear, lock the door, make a noise for like three seconds, and then start moving to like hunt. Whereas with zero grace period, um, as soon as the ghost starts to hunt, it's coming after you pretty much. Um, hunt duration is obviously set to high. Kill extended hunts doesn't matter because we are having to do this solo and it has no effect on the reward multiplier anyways. Uh, there's no evidence, okay? No, no evidence whatsoever. So you are forced to have the ghost hunt you because that is the only way you're gonna be able to figure out what type of ghost you're dealing with, all right? Uh, moving on to the contract here. You have zero setup time, obviously. Um, heavy rain is the default. What you can do is you can change this to fog. The only reason I changed mine to fog is because heavy rain makes it really hard to hear the ghost footsteps. So it's ideal to just have it set to fog and you'll be able to hear the ghost uh, pretty easily. Um, door starting open is high, no hiding spots, obviously. Um, you can have your sanity monitor on, but you're at zero sanity and your sanity pills don't work um, and there's no way to restore your sanity regardless. So you can have this on or off, whatever you wanna do, but what you have to have off is the activity monitor because if you do, it drops it down 0 0.03 uh, reward multiplier. So. We're slow as shit, we have no no flashlights, the ghost is fast as shit. Um, and uh, on top of that, uh, the fuse box is broken. So we are in the dark the entire time, okay? But I'm about to hopefully make this a little bit easier for you here in just a moment. Uh, and then on top of all of this, uh, we are not allowed to use any cursed possessions with this challenge, okay? So uh, yeah, 
So it's very hard, all right? So you have to have those settings. You have to be on Sunny Meadows, the biggest map in the game. Solo, you have to correctly identify the ghost. You have to uh, complete all three objectives. You have to get a photo of the ghost and you have to survive, all right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break down the best gear that you can have um, that will make this a little bit easier for you. Now, I am Prestige 2, uh, level 37, uh, but at the time of completing this guide, uh, or this challenge, uh, you'll see in the footage here in just a moment when I show the actual contract where I got it done, um, I was actually level like 95 Prestige 1, so uh, I had the gear that you need. So just pretend that this is like the correct tiers, but all right, so let's, let's break down the equipment that you need. So first and foremost, you don't have any flashlights, but what you can do is you can use the tier three headgear. Now, if you go to the shop, the tier three headgear is locked behind 82, all right? Now, the only thing that I'm not sure about is does the tier two headgear count as a flashlight? That I don't know. Try it for yourself. Let me know in the comments if it actually worked for you. If you don't have, if you're not level 82 and have the night vision goggles unlocked, but you are going to make this as easy as possible. You're definitely going to need the night vision. All right. Next thing you're going to need is a smudge stick. Okay. Uh, so what I would recommend is doing anything between the tier one and the tier two. The only reason why, and I would kind of stay away from the tier two, mainly because we need the ghost to hunt. And we need to identify the type of ghost we're dealing with based on its hunt behavior. The tier two smudge and the tier three affects the ghost speed. The tier three completely stuns the ghost and it makes it stop in place for like three seconds, I think like that. Um, the tier two smudge um, doesn't stop it in place, but rather it slows it down. Um, so I would kind of stay away from that and just run tier one smudge, even though in the video or in the footage you'll see here in just a moment, I actually was running tier two smudge, I think. Um, but the tier one smudge uh, doesn't affect the ghost speed, but it does prevent it from hunting or from targeting you for six seconds, just like all the other smudges. All right. The next thing you're going to need is a parabolic microphone. This is going to be useful for locating the ghost as well as completing one of the ideal objectives that I'll cover here in just a moment. All right. Uh, next thing you're going to need is salt. Okay. Again, I would just go with tier two salt um, because it's much bigger, obviously. And the tier three salt slows the ghost down just like the tier two smudge. Um, so the caveat and the argument as to why these, the, the tier three, salt and the tier two smudge might be beneficial it's because of the speed difference where the ghost is very fast and you're very slow um slowing the ghost down can actually give you a way out and maybe get you out of a sticky situation but in terms of identifying the ghost based off of its speed um it's best to have something that isn't going to affect the ghost speed but because you need to get close to the ghost whenever it's hunting you to get the ghost photo um you know, it's it. I don't know it. I would just say try it, but I tried it with tier three salt and tier three smudge one time and it just was not ideal. Um, so what worked for me was the tier two smudge and the tier three salt because the tier three salt slowed the ghost down and allowed me to get the ghost photo. And then the tier two smudge slowed the ghost down again so I could get away from it. OK, um, but uh, what I'm about to share with you with the strategy that really won't matter. OK. Um, let's see. The only other thing you're going to need uh, is obviously a lighter, a motion sensor um, and a photo cam. OK, I would recommend the tier three photo cam. But if you're not level 70, you're not going to have that. Um, the only reason is because it's a much bigger screen so you can see where the photo where the photo cam is aiming. But it also has a very rapid time between photos so you can take multiple photos and because you're not trying to go for a perfect game you're just trying to get the ghost photo you can just span the shit out of it when the ghost gets close to you okay and the, the other thing too is that the the photo of the ghost that you need to have to get the challenge done it can be a one star all the way up to a three star so uh whatever's easiest for you pretty much all right so that's pretty much all you got to have is you don't really need the evidence equipment because you're not you're not going to get any evidence. Uh, some would argue that you need the video cam to test for mimic. But the strategy that I use, you're not even going to need to be in the ghost room. OK, uh, you don't need a crucifix because, like I said, there's no evidence. So we need the ghost to hunt us and we don't want to prevent the ghost from hunting. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to simulate um, me doing this contract over again or this challenge all right so uh and then i'll explain the objectives and the other strategy that you need so when you first go in to try to do the apocalypse challenge you need two things to happen 
um, first of all, you need the objectives to be good. All right. Because we're not getting any evidence um, and because we're at zero sanity and we're slow and the ghost is very fast. Uh, we don't really want to waste time finding the ghost room. And whenever you're focused more on finding the ghost room, you're going to be thinking about challenges like, um, you know, witness the ghost again or something like that. Don't waste your time with that. I'm going to break down the ideal objectives that will help you get this done as easy as possible. All right. So first thing you want to do is you want to look at your objectives before you even open the, the truck door. Um, because if you have anything like witness the ghost event, prevent the ghost from hunting with a crucifix, blow out a firelight, um, and detect uh, paranormal evidence with an EMF reader, those are automatic rerolls for me, okay? So if, I, if I've got two out of three good objectives, but I still have something like prevent the ghost from hunting, because again, we don't want to stop the ghost from hunting, we want it to hunt us so we can figure out what it is, um, or even the firelight thing, some would argue that the ghost can still blow out like a candle whenever it's hunting you, but you get a higher probability of that happening in the actual ghost room. And since we're not worried about that, we, we're just gonna put that under the non-ideal objectives, okay? Um, so if I see this, I'm backing out and I'm re-rolling, okay? The objectives you wanna look for are hunt-related objectives. So repel the ghost while it's chasing someone with incense, cleanse the area near the ghost with incense. Um, let's see here, uh, capture a photo of the ghost, um, escape the ghost during a hunt, uh, and then the non-hunt objectives that are very good to do is detect a paranormal sound with a parabolic mic because we're going to need that anyways. We're going to use our parabolic mic anyways to figure out if the ghost is close to us or not. Um, and then obviously motion sensor because you can set that up uh, further in. And then once the ghost starts hunting, if it passes by the motion sensor, you get that objective done. OK, um, so you want to look at your objectives here. And if any of those things uh do not match up with those ideal objectives that I that I mentioned. You just reroll, okay? But in this case, we have capture a photo of the ghost. That's good. Detect the ghost presence with a motion sensor. That's good. Have a member of your team escape the ghost during a hunt. That's also good. So I can do this, all right? This is good. So it doesn't stop there, though. So we have good objectives. That's the first step. The second step we need is we need the ghost to be close to us, all right? So how we identify that is I grab, what I would do is I would grab my night vision goggles. Let's just pretend those are MVGs. Uh, grab my lighter, a smudge stick, and my parabolic mic, and then I head inside, all right? Once I head inside, because I'm at zero sanity, the ghost can start hunting at any moment, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go inside, wait for the ghost to hunt, and then I'm gonna use my parabolic mic to listen. If the ghost is not close, then I'm out of there. I'm re-rolling, all right? So let's just see what happens here. Usually if the ghost is close and, the, and it's not hunting when you first walk in, you might be able to hear like a book being thrown or something like that, but um, it just depends. But you see what I'm saying? Like the, it, having the MVGs are so much, so much help. All right, so it's hunting now. So now I'm listening. And sometimes I'll even go to like the wheelchair. So you hear how fast the ghost is? Oh, it's a Diogen. Look at this. All right, so we could technically do this right now. All right, so it's a Diogen. It's very hard to see, but you don't. But you don't want to put yourself in a in a corner. So again, it's very hard to see, but we have a Diogen right now. So what we need, unless it's a mimic mimicking a Diogen. So now that I know that the ghost is close. Or at least, if he gets too close, I can smudge, but I'll let him get too close. So, that right there is what I want to talk about. That is the perfect setup for how to complete the Gold Apocalypse Trophy Challenge, all right? Uh, and you'll see in the footage from stream, that's actually how I got the challenge done. I had good objectives and I had a Diogen. That is the perfect thing. The other ideal setup is obviously having good objectives, uh, having a ghost that's close by and then obviously having a ghost that is easy to identify during a hunt So like a revenant will be extremely slow and then once it sees you it's gonna be fast And since the ghost is at a hundred for a hundred fifty percent speed, it's gonna be extremely fast So that's a little iffy same with like the other fast ghosts like the Morroy, the Thay uh, The twins is a little bit faster obviously, but 
one thing to remember is that the ghost is at 150 percent speed so like a normal speed ghost is going to sound fast so you might have to do this and attempt it a couple times so that you can start picking up on what is normal speed and what is fast uh, but obviously we had a deogen right there so if i was actually trying and i had better equipment i would have been able to get this done like right here on this video but Fortunately, I've already got it done, and once you get it done once, you don't have to do it again unless you want to or unless one of your friends or viewers or followers like challenge you to do it, then you could do it again. But we got really lucky right there, but um, I'm mad because this challenge took me five days to do, and uh, I could have just got it done in one run right there if I was actually trying. But anywho, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the footage of uh, the contract that I actually got the Gold Apocalypse Trophy Challenge completed. Please enjoy. So, with all that in mind, okay, escape the ghost, capture a photo of the ghost motion sensor, bet. All right, so with all that in mind, the reason why I keep leaving is because in order to make this as easy as possible, um, I'm only doing things that are relevant to like the ghost hunting. So like I can get a photo of the ghost while it's hunting, I can use a motion sensor while it's hunting, and obviously one of the objectives is to escape the ghost during the hunt, which is what I have to do anyways, because I have to survive. Um, was that a ambient noise? I don't know what that was on the paramic there when I first walked in. Um, oh, now it's hunting. Oh, it's fast. Please be a Diogen. Hey, it's coming right to me. It's a Diogen. Please get away from me. It's a Diogen, bro. We got it. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Okay, I can't fuck this up. I cannot fuck this up. It's freaking revenge time. It's time to say F you to the gold apocalypse challenge. This is our time, bro. We cannot fuck this up. We cannot fuck this up. All right, so as soon as this hunt is over, Thank God, and for the love of God, please don't be a mimic. All right, so I smudged it, so I got a little bit of time. All right, so we know it's a deal. We know it's like we know it's going to come to our location anyways, so that's good. We got that going for us. Um, so we're going to go grab our motion sensor and our camera, and then we're going to run back, grab another smudge just in case. Is there a looping spot in here? No, not really. Okay. That's fine. Alright, so we have to get a photo of the ghost. We escaped the ghost during a hunt just now. Yep. So all we need to do is get a photo of the ghost to do our other objective as well as for the uh, apocalypse challenge. And we need to detect it with a motion sensor. If I freaking die, I will uninstall Phasmophobia and never play it again. That's a bit dramatic. I'm just kidding. But... Dude, I, it, 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 there's no possible way I should die. I can't, I, I can't fuck this up. I've been doing this challenge for five days now. All right, I'm just going to throw these in here. We have the lighter. Lighter stays in hand. We've learned from our mistakes, from our mistakes. <laughs> Please, dude. Don't drop the lighter. Lighter is not dropping. I'm not dropping the lighter. I can't, dude. I can't fuck this up. It's gonna hunt again. We got this. We got this. And now we wait for a hunt. Please don't be a mimic. Because if it's a mimic, that means the next time it hunts, it's going to be a different ghost.
Twitter. I hope I got the ghost photo. I don't know if I did. We're on the home stretch here. I hope I got the ghost photo. Okay, that time I got the ghost photo. I know I did. Fuck you, buddy. We got this in the bag now. We got it. We freaking did it. I should be over here in just a moment. I'm just going to lead her in here. All right, hunt's over. Let's get the fuck out of here. We got everything. And I'm circling it, because that would be the other thing that would fuck me up. We did it. Oh, my God. Five days of pure brain rot. That is absolutely wild, bro. Now here comes the moment of truth. Do we get the... Uh, Bronze and silver fire. apocalypse trophies as well, since we did the gold. Like, do we automatically get it since we got the gold? Or are we going to have to do the silver and bronze too? The silver and bronze are easier because there's easier settings involved. But I think we're going to take a little bit of a breather <laughs> if we don't, dude. Oh, my God. Okay. All right. So just check. We've got all three. We've got a photo of the ghost. You freaking did it. We told you that you would And it was it. a three star. Okay. We got the ghost selected. We've survived. We freaking did it. We fucking did it, bro. Couldn't have done it without you guys, man. Oh! We got it all! We got all three! Let's go! I have to be quiet. There's a newborn sleeping. Look at how much money we just got, too, bro. Holy fucking shit. That's right. That's crazy, my dude. We're gamers now, dude. We got the trophies. Alrighty, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, the amount of relief and satisfaction I felt once I got that done. As soon as I heard it was a Diogen, I was so fed up and ready to be done with it. I was like, okay, I have to get this, okay? But <laughs> anyways, I hope you enjoyed it and I hope that this guide was helpful. If it was, please let me know down in the comments. If you've already gotten your gold apocalypse trophy and for some reason you wanna do it again and uh, you learned something from this guide, uh, let me know in the comments down below. But anyways, I appreciate you um, and uh, you're gonna get there. It's, it's a very hard challenge, but it, it is doable. If I could do it, you sure as hell can do it because 90% uh, of people are smarter than me. So anyways, uh, do me a favor. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, give me a thumbs down. If you want to find your way back for more Phasmo content and other spooky stuff, hit the subscribe button with notifications on. If you want to come check me out live, uh, you can do so by going to twitch.tv slash koozie or clicking the link down below in the description. And uh, yeah, do me a favor. Until next time, take care of yourself, take care of each other. And as always, don't stop being who you are. You're valued, you're loved, you belong in this community, and I'll see you guys in the next video, okay? Take care.